that, it is my uh, pleasure to introduce to you today the morning speaker, brother, pastor, mighty man of God, Pastor Rob. Can we give him a hand this morning? Well, good morning. How's everyone doing? Probably better than me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> probably better than my wife because she's probably shaken and nervous for me. Um, it's good to be able to share what I believe God's put on my heart this morning. But before I even begin there, I, I, um, I, some, a couple things I want to say. Um, um, number one, I want to say thank you to Pastor Michael and Pastor Tony for giving me an opportunity to share God's word today. Um, I love Pastor Michael and Pastor Tony. I love them with all my heart. I love their family. Um, kind of, I've really been feeling some of the, um, the pains that he's been feeling. It was a little girl going off to, as he calls it, Allie Bama. You know, his little, his little girl's name, Allie. And um, I've just been feeling, I remember when all my kids finally left the house. And uh, it was rough on us. Sometimes it's rough on us guys. I don't know what it is. Some of the women are like, oh, God, get them out of here, you know. It's more, less work to do, but guys, I don't know, but for, at least for me, and I, I can just feel it in Pastor Michael, and I, my heart goes out to him, but you know what? That's, uh, it's part of life, and we, we want our children to go and um, be what God's called them to be and uh, to take that journey of how he, how he wants to get them there. So um, I just want to say that I love him, and I appreciate him more than you'll ever know. Uh, he's doing a tremendous job here. I'm not just saying this for the sake of to be up here and to say wonderful things. I thank God for Pastor Michael. Yes. I've been looking for someone like him for a long time that I could really put my whole heart into helping him accomplish what God wants him to do through this church that he has placed him in to be the leader. And I just my, it is my joy to do anything I can to help him just to take a little bit off of his load you know, that he carries for, for the Lord and for you because he loves you and he loves God. And um, I just wanted to say that, uh, and I thank God for all of our pastors here that are on staff. You know, uh, Pastor Mike always says, uh, many hands make light work. So it is so true because of all of you, uh, the pastors on staff and all of our volunteers. It's what helps us, and we got this big event coming, and we need so many hands. And we need so many helps. We need you just to come out. If you can't do anything, just come out and worship and just let, let the presence of God in your life shine on somebody and let this community know that they're loved by God and by us. So uh, I just wanted to say that. Um, but before I even do anything else, I, I really need to ask you all to pray for a uh, dear family of ours here at the church. Um, received a call this uh, late this week um, that... Um, a, um, not a, Connie Gould and Chuck Gould, I almost called her her mom's name because I knew her mom forever. Um, Connie Gould and, and Chuck Gould are really fighting for their life right now. Uh, they're in uh, St. Joe's Hospital. COVID um, has really wreaked some havoc. And um, they asked me to ask you to pray for them. Um, I've talked with the daughter and uh, the son. Uh, her, the daughter's name is Angela and the son's name is Trent. Uh, got a chance to talk with them and actually uh, see uh, see one of them yesterday. And um, uh, my wife and I took, they wanted a prayer, a, a Bible and a prayer cloth from here to take there because no one can go in. And so um, they had been at the hospital all day. And so I, I said, hey, maybe I can take that down. But And thank God I was able to get into the ICU and the head nurse was so nice. She said she would do that. She would place the, I said, if you could even place the prayer cloth even on the, against their body somehow, just get it next to them and put this Bible. Uh, this is what the family asked me to do. They said, we don't know what else to do. Can you please take a Bible down here and put it in my dad's room and my mom's room and on a prayer cloth in each one, for each one of them too. So I, I said we would pray. And I just wanted to give you the, the, um, the seriousness of it um, that we really look to God for them today. Some of you have been there, you know what it's like. And, um, you know, if you don't know Connie, she's one of the ones that interprets for the uh, deaf here. Um, she's very, very vital. I remember when we did the, um, the giveaway, uh, was it last fall? We did all the food giveaway, the big trucks load. She was out there praying for each and every. She took her time 
and prayed forever. We're like, oh, we got to get this line moving on. But she wanted to pray specifically for everybody. And uh, so she also is fighting for her life with COVID too. So uh, she is in ICU. No one can visit her. But God could visit her. The angels of the Lord can uh, visit them and touch them. I don't know how God wants to do it. I don't know what method or what means, but we believe God answers prayer. So um, I think I'd like you to just sit there and pray. That way you don't, I don't want you to stand because I want you to worry about sitting again for a minute. Can you just take a moment where you're seated and let's pray together. I'm going to pray out and I want you to pray out in your own words because, you know, God loves to hear from all of you. There's something that he wants to work through you. There's a gifting in you. There's a prayer that you can pray that I can't pray. So let's pray. All right. Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now on behalf of Connie and, and Chuck Gould. Lord, we are just praying, God, that you would just give them a miracle, Lord. We don't understand everything, God. We don't know everything that's supposed to happen or not supposed to happen. But God, your word says for us to pray about everything, Lord. And we are turning to you right now, Lord. And we are looking to you to, to touch them now, the author and the finisher of their faith, Lord Jesus. Touch Chuck, Lord, in that ICU room, Lord. Touch Connie, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Jesus, everywhere you went, you prayed for somebody and they did recover. There was never one time that you didn't succeed in getting the answer to that one in need. So, Lord, we come as a body, a family body of believers on behalf of Connie, on, on behalf of Chuck today, that, Lord, that you would give them something unique in their body that causes them to rise up against this this dreaded COVID, Lord, that is trying to raise its head up and strike down many wonderful people, Lord. We declare right now, COVID, you have no more effect against them in the name of Jesus. Bodies, we declared, Connie and Chuck, your bodies be renewed and revitalized in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we believe there's no distance in prayer. Lord, send your angels. Is that how you want to do it? Pour out your spirit upon them. If that's how you want to do it. But we declare the blood of Jesus covers and protects them today. In the name of Jesus, we declare, Lord, you're moving somehow, some way, God. You can do what we don't understand how you can do. We're trusting you and the power of your word. And the power of your Holy Spirit that dwells within each and every one of us that are believers today, Lord. We release our faith that has been ignited by the Holy Spirit. God, do something miraculous in that hospital room, Lord. Do it, Father. Just as you spoke through that speaker on Friday night at the Jesus Conference. His little girl was dying of COVID, Lord. He couldn't get in there when, he, when she was dying, Lord. They said, there's no hope. You might just give up. But God, you sent angels in that room when that pastor prayed to his little girl. You sent them in there. And overnight, so to speak, God, she recovered. And they couldn't even understand it. Because God, you save those that call upon you. You save them, Lord. You said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, Lord. I believe that word is deeper than just salvation. I believe, Lord, when we call on you, you move, Lord. When we just release our faith and we declare what your word says, God, you move. And we thank you and we praise you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, church, for praying for this dear family. Um, I want to, I have a particular subject I want to talk to you about. If you were at the Jesus conference, my key word was the key, one of the key pieces of his message. I'm like, thank you, Lord. You let me know I'm, I'm on track because this is what I believe God put in my heart to share with you to help this body of believers. So before I even begin, I'd like you to turn your attentions to the big screens. I've got a video, just a real short video, just to kick off this topic with you today. Let's look at this. Listen. 
listen to me very closely. You can write everything down if you want to. Be brave enough to write every one of your goals down, but I'm gonna tell you something. Life's gonna hit you in your mouth and you gotta do me a huge favor. Your why has to be greater than that knocked out. And I love it, Buster Douglas got knocked out. Nobody ever got knocked out by Mike Tyson and ever got back up. It was almost a 10 count. I, he was stumbling. They were four, three, two, one. And ding, ding, ding. Saved by the bell. He goes to his corner. The whole world is like, up. Oh, that's it. Once he comes back out, that's it. Mike's going to just hammer him. And exactly that. Mike Tyson came out like, I got him. I got this kid up against the rope. Listen to me, many of you right now, life's got you up against the rope. You can't give up. You can't give in. Life, listen to me, if it was easy, everybody would do it. And if life's got you backed up, I need you to do what Buster Douglas did. Buster Douglas start fighting back. And the world was shocked. <gasps> Goliath has been knocked down. What happened? And they went to Buster Douglas and they asked Buster Douglas simply like, what happened? And Buster Douglas said, listen to me, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. Here was the challenge. The challenge was, it's real simple. Before my mother died, she told the whole world that I was going to beat Mike Tyson. And two days before the fight, my mother died. Buster Douglas had, he had a decision to make. Let's go! He could die with his mother, or he made a decision, I can wake up and I can live for mom. And he knocked Mike Tyson out simply because his why was greater than that punch. His why was greater than defeat. His why was greater than his trial and his tribulation. And I'm telling you, if you don't know what your why is and your why isn't strong, you're going to get knocked out every single day. What you think about that today? What is your why that causes you to persevere? There's a lot of things we can persevere in life, but we can persevere about, you know, uh, the choice of the career that God may have for us. We can persevere about following the call of God in, in, in full-time ministry, but we also need to uh, get a why when it comes to praying. There needs to be something that is so huge in our why that it makes us persevere and overcome whatever the obstacles are. So my, my encouragement to each and every one of you today is I'm asking God to help you to persevere in prayer for whatever that why is that you are looking to God for. It needs to be something that's really strong in your heart. It needs to be something that really is, is your heart is full about that moves your heart. Because Jesus said, where your heart is, that's where your treasure is. And I believe if your why is your treasure that's in your heart, you'll pray like you ain't never prayed before. This is what we've seen throughout history. People's why became bigger than the circumstance. I, I, there's so many stories that I could tell you, and I've been wrestling on which one to give you today, about some things that I've seen God help me to persevere through, that I've seen... Uh, him give me that why that is more meaningful than anything else in this, in this very moment. Uh, this word uh, persistence, I'm going to look at it for a minute. Uh, they're going to bring it up on the screens here. You know, the question I want to ask is, uh, you know, when it comes to persistence or perseverance, do we really understand what persistence is? Can we develop perseverance? Let me read the definition of persistence. Persistence is the choice to continue something in spite of difficulty and opposition and struggle to achieve that goal. That's persistence. Perseverance is the continuation of commitment through action in spite of the lack of success. The difference between, they're, they're very similar. The only difference is one is a beginning choice. I'm going to persist. That's the beginning stages of it. And per perseverance is I am committed to stay through till no matter what comes, no matter what stops me, no matter what says, okay, that's as far as you can go. Whether it's your education, whether it's physically something you've been looking to God for, whether it's something in your family. I am telling you, when your persistence becomes so great, when you, uh, with your why, something is about to happen. We, we, you're about to see God move on a, on, a, on a scale like never before. I believe sometimes we don't see God's will done because we don't make whatever that is of his will our why, our reason for. 
going after God in prayer. We see that even in the Bible. I don't have it on my, on my notes, but I'm going to say it. If you, if you uh, remember, uh, Herod had already uh, uh, imprisoned uh, James, the apostle James, beheaded him. And then the Bible says that Herod said it pleased the Jews so much that he, that he took off uh, uh, the apostle James' head. He said, I'm going to go after Peter now. I'm going to take him out too. But the Bible says something happened here. It says that when they heard this, and Peter was in prison between two guards, and his execution was quite near, the church, God's people like you and me, so to speak, the church prayed continually. They did not cease. You know what I believe? Their why came up a little higher than perhaps when they had it for James. Now, I don't know that to be true or not, but you do see something different. We're not told that the church went into deep intercessor prayer for, for James. But we do see they go after God with all their heart for the apostle Peter. And we see the outcome. If you look in the book of Acts, uh, Peter's chained between these two, uh, uh, two guards, and uh, he's asleep. And an angel of the Lord walks in and bumps him and says, come on, get up, let's go. Get your shoes on, let's get out of here. Yeah. Comes and he, Peter thinks this, this has got to be just kind of a dream or a vision. I he didn't even know it was real. Gets up, chains are off, doors are open, they're unlocked, the gates are open. They walk on out through the main gate and they, they open automatically to them. And Peter doesn't even come to himself until he finds himself later on some street. He said, my, my goodness, this is real. Just going to give you some Peter words, if you wouldn't mind there right now. I'm sure he said, what in the world has happened to me? He goes to the house where they're all praying, and a little girl named Rhoda comes to the answer of the door when he's knocking. And nobody believes her. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? I've seen this happen over and over. I don't fault the church that they didn't. They would say, oh, come on, girl, you know what you're talking about. They said, you're beside yourself. It's just his, his angel you've seen or... You know, you don't know what you're talking about. And they were just continuing in prayer. I don't know about you, but I've had God answer so many of my prayers that even when I, I know total faith is released, and I am, I am just convinced my why has caused me to persevere through this thing, through the difficulty, through the challenge, through the thing that says it's impossible. And then I look to God, and God answers, and I'm always surprised. And you know what? I don't want to ever stop being surprised. I don't want it to be like, yeah, he did it. Thanks a lot, God. See you later. You know, I want it to make it move me to worship. Move me to say, my Lord came through for me. Everything's different now. I love it when he answers prayer. And I just, so I think this church is the same way. They're looking at the people that are believing for Peter to be set free. They're like, whoa. He did come through for us. So I just want to encourage you, we need to be persistent in prayer and have perseverance to continue to the commitment in spite of the lack of success sometimes. We see that in all things of life that we deal with. You plan something, obstacles. You, you go after something in education, you go after a job, obstacles. Perseverance will bring it through. Let me, let me give you this uh, meaning of the word pers persistence. That it derives from, now you won't, I don't think I have this on the screen. Uh, the word persistence derives from these Latin words. Are you ready? This per, is, the meaning is through. And the severus, the meaning is severe. So that, in other words, it's we're going through something severe and difficult. Anytime you are being persistent in something, anytime you operate in persistence, you're going to go through it and it's not going to be easy. You know, we, we've got to get out of our head that it's just got to be easy or I don't want to put the effort in. Let me tell you what some great men said about persistence. Are you ready? Somebody's ever heard of John D. Rockefeller. You know, he's from the Cleveland area. I just uh, listened to, uh, listened or watched it on YouTube, uh, I don't know, months ago, maybe half, half, a, half a year ago. 
I didn't know much about John D. Rockefeller. I knew he was a really rich man, but I found out he's from Cleveland. He also was a very devout man. He didn't drink, he didn't smoke, he didn't do nothing. Matter of fact, he wasn't one to spend a lot of money either. But he was very charitable to many churches. He was a Baptist uh, of the Baptist denomination. And um, he just, he was a great, he was a great man, built a, one of the most amazing wealth uh, of any family ever. And uh, he was known to be uh, fair and uh, give bonuses to his employees, even though sometimes you'll read in history that he might have held out for certain things. But this is the heart of John D. Rockefeller. Here's what he said. I do not think that there is anything other, there's any other quality so essential to success of any kind as the quality of perseverance. It overcomes almost anything, even nature. Persistence in prayer, I've seen it go against the grain of nature. We've seen this even in the, throughout the word of God where God caused the sun to stand still for Joshua when he was in a battle. Moses had his hands held up and they needed to win before the sun went down or that, that army was probably going to regroup and you have to fight them all over again. But God caused the sun, the time, everything to stand still just for that victory. Let me read another uh, famous quote to you. Uh, this is from Martin Luther King. He said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. I had this Rocky Balboa clip I was going to bring, but I said, oh, I'm going to, too many videos, I don't want to over, overwhelm. And my wife will say, you got too much stuff, man. This, she'll tell me that. You, so, Rob, you got too much. So I, I trimmed back all my uh, screen stuff, and, and I even took this video off. But Rocky Balboa, in the movie Rocky Balboa, uses basically this line Martin Luther King said when he said, you got to keep moving forward. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't walk, uh, run, then walk. If you can't walk, walk then crawl. In the movie, Rocky is uh, being challenged by his son, do not fight another fight. It's looking bad for me, and it's going to look bad on you. And he's saying, you're going to cause me not to succeed. I'm finally getting somewhere, and this is going to hinder my success. I'm going to have to go through things I don't want to. It may stop me. And he said, there is nothing that's going to hit harder than life. How many knows that you've been through some things? Man, you didn't think you was going to have to deal with, but God got you through it. And it, some of it hurt. Some of it was very painful. But Rocky told his son, it's not how hard you can hit. In other words, not how hard you can be successful, make the success. Oh, man, I, I hit it. I succeeded it. But he said the real key to overcoming life is you keep moving forward. I'll give you a little, I'll give you a little Arnold, or not Arnold, but Rocky Balboa uh, personation. He said this here, I, I, I'm probably going to blow it today, but I'll give it a shot. But he said, um, doesn't matter how life takes you and hits you, you've got to keep moving forward. That's how winning's done. A little bit. Do better, but not today. Anyway, one of my favorite characters of all the time. You know why I love him? He shows us and that this the character, don't quit. Persevere. Don't stop. Pers just like Buster Douglas we just saw up there. It was all the odds where he got Mike Tyson had never been beat. Goliath had never fallen. He was a champion. I'll tell you, I, I liked Mike Tyson's fights. Usually they only last like maybe one round. Uh, I paid $45 to go to Packer one time watch him fight Michael Spinks, and it lasted one minute and 15 seconds for $45. <laughs> Took my father-in-law with us, and it was like, well, that's it, we're done. Um, the man was ferocious. But Buster Douglas had no chance, lost his mother two days before the fight, but his why became greater than Mike Tyson's mighty punch. And he won. For the first time, somebody beat Mike Tyson. Even though he went through the tremendous amount of obstacles and difficulty, he could have threw in the towel and said, I just lost my mom two days ago. I'm not mentally ready to fight. 
But he said, I'm going to do this for my mom. She said, I would win, and I'm going to win it for her. His why became greater than anything else and anyone else that said he couldn't do it. Even when he got knocked down. You get knocked down because you're out, at least for a second. There's a chain reaction when they hit you. It snaps in your, um, well, I'm not very medical, but it snaps something in your nervous system, and you're out for just a moment. He was knocked out. Trying to come to enough. In life, there's things that have knocked you out. But you got to get back up. Oh, yeah. Do not let it define you. Even if it looks like you totally lost that thing. Allow God to help you to use that to win something else. It may not have been that thing, but you're going to use it to help you to develop your perseverance through situations. We can develop perseverance. Some experts say we're born with it. There's a great debate about it still. But everyone agrees you can learn and develop persistence in life. Every one of us can develop our persistence. Every one of us can develop that thing inside of us that says, I'm pushing, I'm pushing forward. I'm not giving up. They may have said this. They may have said that. I'm not giving up. Um, I've got about eight things that uh, help develop the character of perseverance. So I told you you could develop. I'll give you a couple of them, okay? You need to remember your past victories of answered prayer. Write them down. Read them over and over. Giving thanks for all that he's already done. Stir up your faith, as the word of God says to Timothy. Stir up the gift that's in you that was given to you by the laying on of hands. Everyone has faith that has been given to us from the very beginning. It says keep your eyes on the prize. You've got to keep your eyes on the want, the why. Keep your eyes on the prize. Remind yourself and God why you expect an answer. Now, this is very, very important because you've got to know, how can I expect my why? How can I have perseverance for my why, whatever I'm seeking? Well, you need to get into God's word and find the promises that are tied to that why. One of the best things you can find out is all the promises in God's word are yes and amen. So be it is what that word amen means. So be it in Christ Jesus. So if you are in Christ Jesus, all the promises belong to you. You just got to begin to believe and apply them accordingly. Everyone in the word of God from the time Genesis on, everything fulfilled through trusting God's word. Trusting God said it. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to persevere. Jacob and Abraham were promised a great nation, even though they were up against great odds. Abraham, well past the time to have a child, his wife too. But he held on to God's word. God said he would have a seed. It would be so multiple, the sands of the sea couldn't, couldn't uh, uh, match the number of them, nor the stars of the heavens. Abraham believed, God, you said it. You said it. I'm going to believe you. I've had my doubts. I've had times where the obstacles have kicked me down. I fell down. I've been knocked out a few times in this journey, but I'm getting back up. I'm pressing through. That's exactly what he did. And you know what? When he pressed through and he had perseverance, the Bible says, God says, I'm going to call that righteousness to you, Abraham. And Abraham wasn't perfect. He lied and said his wife wasn't his. She's just a sister, so he wouldn't die. He thought they were going to kill him and take her captive. More than once he did that. But you notice later on in life, this coward Abraham becomes somebody else. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. When, they, when they took his nephew Lot, he rounded up a bunch of men and took on an army and, and rescued Lot and all of everything they had out of the hand of that, that enemy. His coward was transformed. He learned to persevere. He learned to trust God. How about you? Have there been things in your life that you've seen God do that you thought were impossible? I know I have many, many times. I was looking to hear Jacob prayed the word. This is why it's so important. One of the things to, to help you have perseverance, you've got to remember what God's word. Jacob says that this, Jacob says this here. He was coming back from being gone for a long time. He ran away from his brother Esau because he stole his, the birthright. Went to be with his uh, uncle Laban. Came away from uh, where Laban was with so many uh, uh, flocks and children and wives. It was unbelievable. And, but he's about to meet his brother Esau. He's got to go through. 
He's got to persevere. He's got to trust God. How does he do it? Esau says this, God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, go back to your land and to your family and I will cause you to prosper. Mm. And I am unworthy of all the kindness and the faithfulness you have shown your servant. Indeed, I've crossed over this Jordan with my staff and now I have, I have become two camps. Please rescue me from my brother Esau, for I am afraid of him. Otherwise, he will, may come back and attack me, the mothers and the children. Jake, Jacob was real with God. God, I'm scared. But you said right here, it's okay to be honest with God. David did it all the time. God, why, 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 where are you? But he had always ring it out with saying, but I trust in the Lord. You've never failed me yet. He always turned it around. He didn't leave you. He didn't leave his little uh, song in, in despair. He turned it around. He began to trust what God says. This is what Esau did. This is what you need to do when you've when you got a why and you need to know how can I persevere. You've got to find something in God's word that will push you over. That's why it's so important we, we read God's word and get it in us. You say, well, why do I got to do all that? Because it says... Um, we co-labor with God. Paul said this, we are called to co-labor with God on this earth by doing and praying. Your kingdom come and your will be done as, as it is in heaven. Jesus taught us pray. There's a part we have to play. We got to take action. We co-labor with God. We're always waiting on God, but God said, I'm just waiting on you. Can you persevere? Can you pray a little longer? Sometimes we have to adjust and adapt. We got to remember 8, 8, 20, uh, Romans 8, 28. All everything is going to work together for our good. Don't look good. Doesn't feel good. It looks pretty bad. I didn't deserve it. Maybe I did. Maybe it was my own mistakes. But if you believe God's word, Romans 8, 28, it says you will cause it. He will cause everything to work to your advantage. Isn't that good news today? Here's one of the things I want to kind of, I'm going to try and bring it in for a landing here real quick, but this is my key scripture that I really wanted to give you today. It's a little, it's a little lengthy, so you can follow along on the screen. I'm going to be reading out of the, uh, the Passion Translation, and it's uh, Luke 18.1. It says, one day Jesus taught the apostles to keep praying and never stop or lose hope. Are you ready? Are you listening this is why Jesus taught them this. He just, just wanted to tell them a nice little story so they could uh, get sleep and go to sleep. You know, a little bedtime story. No, he was telling them something that is very, very important. He taught them, keep praying, never stop, never lose hope. And he shared them with them this illustration. He said, in a certain town there was a judge, a thick-skinned and godless man who had no fear of others' opinions. And in the same town there was a poor widow who kept pleading with this judge, grant me justice and protect me from my oppressor. He ignored her pleas for quite some time, but she kept on asking. Eventually he said to himself, this widow keeps annoying me, demanding her rights, and I'm tired of listening to her. Even though I'm not a religious man and I don't care about the opinions of others, sometimes we do. I'll, I was a little, little side note for you, just in case you forgot. To, sometimes we care but this guy, he didn't care what nobody thought. I'll get her off my back by answering her claims for justice. And I'll rule in her favor. Then she'll leave me alone. Jesus continued, said, did you hear what the godless judge said? That he would answer her persistent request? Don't you know that God, the true judge, will grant justice to all his chosen ones who cry out to him night and day? And he will pour out his spirit upon them. You know what that means? When you're enduring, like this widow, he'll give you a strength to endure. He'll give you something. That's why the Holy Spirit has come to live and dwell amongst us. He's called the comforter, the counselor. He's the paraclete in the Greek. He's come called alongside. That's what the paraclete. He's called alongside you and me. We've got to tap in what God has given to us. He said, I, he said he will pour out his spirit upon them. He will not delay 
to answer you and give you what you ask for. God will be swift. God will give swift justice to those who don't give up. So be ever praying, ever expecting, in the same way as this, as this widow. And then I love what Jesus said. Even so, when the Son of Man comes back, will he find this kind of undying faith on the earth? Will he find it in you? Will you allow God to help you develop that perseverance in prayer that will push things over? That'll, there's an old saying that I, uh, I've told many people about. It's called, uh, it's called push. Pray until something happens. That means don't quit. Pray until. Until what? Until something. What? Something happens. Don't stop praying. That's what Jesus taught in the very beginning. He taught them to keep praying. Never stop. Never lose hope. You know, some of you might be saying, yeah, but this judge, he said, God, I'll answer quickly. But he didn't answer quickly. Can I remind you of Daniel? He had read God's word and said the time is coming really quickly for his people to come back to Israel. And he's asking God, God, what, what's it, when is it going to happen? Will you show me? Will you help me to know what to, I can expect? He was looking God for an answer. And he prayed. And his prayer lasted 21 days nonstop. I say nonstop because he fasted. Those 20, he let things go. He said, I'm not going to eat certain things that I really love. I'm just going to eat the things that would just barely sustain me. And I'm going to seek God. And for 21 days, the answer didn't come. I thought God said he would not delay to answer you. And give you what you ask for, huh? It says God will give swift justice. Some of us, we said, I prayed, nothing happened. So did Daniel. Prayed for 21 days, nothing happened. But then God gave him an insight. When the answer came, he said, I'm going to tell you why you had to keep praying for 21 days. Because the day you prayed, the answer came. But the prince of Persia withheld the messenger to give that to Daniel. We don't understand everything, but there's another world outside this world. Evil spirits are real. It's one of Jesus' main objectives when he, when he was doing his ministry here on earth. A lot, of, a lot of demonic activity going on, and he was taking charge. He was, uh, there's a new sheriff in town. And he was casting demons out left and right and setting God's people free. There's a, there's a, 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 a Satan has a very uh, strategic um, army or hierarchy or a system that is outside this natural. I think Paul said that, you know, there's a, he was in a third heaven. It means there's a, that means there's a first heaven and there's a second heaven and there's a third a lot, a lot of theologians believe that that second realm is where Satan and his little uh, system is set up to hinder us. So we've got to pray. But, but God's word says that not only are we here on this first heaven, that's what that means. We're right here where the heavens and skies are above us, this first heaven. But we're also seated in the third heaven in Christ Jesus. Already we are seated with him. We're, we're in the third heaven. Where we can talk to God and get answers. We pray here on the first through the second, no matter what the enemy is saying, no matter what hindrance he's doing. And we press on to get that answer in the third heaven where we occupy a seat of authority. Amen. Daniel prayed for 21 days and when the answer come, here's what the angel told him. Daniel, I was coming the first day, but I was held up. As, I, as they held me up and, and, and kept me from going to, to give you that answer, I called for Michael, the archangel, to come down and help me. And he grabbed that prince of Persia, bound him up, so I was able to come on through. And I brought you the answer. Daniel's 21 days of consistent perseverance in prayer brought the answer. Sometimes, church, we, we quit. Man, I've seen it happen. Things are going. Things are moving. And then all of a sudden, we got this. No, 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 no. 
Push. Pray until something happens. And I like to add something to that. Pray some more. Because the enemy always has a counterattack. Oh, I've seen him many times. How many has ever witnessed to something that God's healed you of or done something for, like Pastor Allen said about allergies not too long ago? And there comes a, t- a counterattack. He's sharing and witnessing the, the word of God because Jesus said persecution will come for my word's sake. He wants to steal the word that you have to say for God right out of your mouth. Oh, you can't talk about that. Look, oh, hey, you got problems again. He'll do that. He'll do a counterattack after you've been set free, after you've seen the answer. That's why you keep on praying. You keep pressing through because he's going to give up. He's gonna, Jesus, said, Jesus was tempted for 40 days, not one day, but 40 days. And Satan had to leave him alone until another season. He had to let, had to let off. We got we to gotta press on. My mother-in-law had... Um, uh, osteoporosis of her spine area. And, um, oh, she was in bad shape. She was in her 70s and t- living on, I think it was uh, Darvacet at that time. They gave her, she was on that all the time. One night she went for prayer and uh, was healed. You know, I was, you know, I, I know she was healed because she said it. And then she's out in the, in the, in the yard pulling weeds that, the next day. This lady couldn't do much more. My father-in-law pretty much did everything once that kind of went down. She do what she came from the seated position, but he was cooking, he was cleaning, he was doing the dishes. God healed her. And she was worshiping the Lord. About three days later, she lost that. She lost that healing. She let the enemy say, oh, you feel that? You see that? Isn't that, isn't that what you thought was okay? No, you got to fight on. Amen. We've known too many miracles that happen to say, no, it, I guess it didn't. No, 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 no. You got to press on. Amen. You got to persevere. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up the standard against him. And I know many translators have said, it says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against it. There really ain't much more, anything more powerful than water when it comes to destruction on this planet. That water will mess up everything. It's powerful. Um, so God will use something very powerful to raise up that standard against the enemy. Oh, I need to, I need to move on real quick. All right, I'm, I'm going to tell you the story. I got permission from my wife to, to tell this story. I may leave some names anonymous. And um, this just happened this last week, last week or two. Um, my wife's been trying to get some family members off drugs. They've been addicted to... Um, uh, one of the worst ones out there right now. My mind's blank of what it is, but it's uh, the stuff's killed everybody. Uh, fentanyl. Been that way for 12 years. Ran through a lot of funds that people had given him. Over $250,000 worth. It's not just a casual addiction. It's for real. My wife loves this boy. She loves him with all of her heart. He's really special to her. My wife, I've been watching her. As I've been preparing this message, I've been watching her. I'm like, she is just showing me this is exactly what I'm supposed to talk about. Now she began to co-labor with God. She'd been praying for him and praying for him and praying for him and praying for him and talking to him and talking to him and talking to him and talking to the family that they need to partner with trying to help him get better. Talking with him, talking with him and talking. Don't, 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 uh, don't give him money. Don't give him money. Oh, it took her years. But the Lord had been answering. They finally, most of them came, saw the light, stopped giving 
my wife, uh, you know, we had a court date. Just got out of jail. She wanted to go down there. She, she wanted to try and help him. Well, he was released on his own because it wasn't a drug violation, something else. And when she got to him, she stayed, well, she actually, actually she helped in that courtroom for him because they wanted to do more to him. But my wife talked to the prosecutor and said, this isn't who he really is. Because of that, the judge even said, I just want you to know that lady back there in the polka dotted uh, dress, um, that's, that's why I'm being lenient, because she talked to the prosecutor, told my, told my wife's nephew. That's why we're going to be as lenient as we are right now. He, had another, he has another court date coming up. Um, she was there, and she intercepted as soon as he got out of there, start talking to him about, you, you need to get in rehab. Been, been trying for years to get him there. So we got him into teen, she got him into teen challenge. Amen. And um, he stayed at our house the one night, and then we took him the next morning. He was all set up to go, and he was there for one day. He said, the people were nice, and I, and I liked them, but I'm not, I'm not ready for this. I like what I'm doing. Well, in the meantime, we do... A, before we got him to teen challenge, we had to do an intervention. He stole my bike and ran away when he was staying at our home. So we went and got him and said, hey, no, we're not giving up on you. And the family came and intervened even alongside my wife and I. And um, he decided to come home. We got him to teen challenge, but he left. And my wife heard about it, ran and got him again as quick as she could. He still don't want to go. I, I'm not ready for this. And... Uh, she worked and worked with him and talked with him, and so did the family, and she got him into another treatment uh, detox over here at, um, on Enterprise Drive. And um, he's there for a day or two, and my wife gets a call. He's checking out. He's leaving. She runs over and gets him again, and this is Monday night. We're having prayer. And... Um, I, I was leading prayer with, with Ann that night, Pastor Michael and, Tony, and Pastor Tony were in uh, Tegan Alley. And uh, I just got that word that, you know, my wife was trying to help him, stop him from using him because she's afraid he's going to OD, he's going to die. And you're taking fentanyl, and you're just, it's just roulette, you know, Russian roulette. It's going to happen. So she goes and tries to get him. She gets, meets him there and says, where do you want to go? Because by this time... God has shut down every door that he can't stay nowhere. He has nowhere to go. He's not staying in my house other than one day to get you to retreatment. He's not staying in anybody's house because he's not to be trusted. And God shut every door down when one, of the, one, one person wanted to keep the door open that was really aiding and abetting his habit. But God shut that door down that evening. So when he checked out, he had nowhere to go. My wife got him. Where, where are you going to go, John? Just take me down to the gas station down here, Valley View. Just let me, just drop me off there. And I had the church, we were praying here. I said, God, give her wisdom when to push, when to back off. Help her know what to say and everything. And so she gets him all the way to Valley View, lets him out. He's standing there by the car for a, for a while. And he reaches in, but while he's standing there, my wife's, it's just uneasiness. I can't leave him here. I can't leave him here. I can't, I can't afford to let something happen. It's going it's to kill me. Remember, my wife loves this boy. So she said, he went reached in to get his stuff, and she said, John, where are you going? I can't leave you here. My, I cannot leave you here. I know you're going to go use, and something bad's going to happen, and I'm going to have to live with it. Come on, get back in the car. Would you come to church and let the people pray? They, she knew we were in prayer, but it was getting late. It was already like 7.15. She didn't even know we are here. She's texting me, and I'm, we're in prayer, so I'm not answering. She's like, where are you? You know, answer this phone. And uh, so I was just uh, in prayer, and I didn't check my phone at all. So she gave him here, and there was about four or five left. And, um, and she said, would you let the people pray for you if I take you to church? We said, yeah. And we're praying for a little bit, and then Larry Root come over. 
and was praying for him, him and his wife, Levon. And I can see the presence of God on Larry. He's just shaking as the other ones are praying for him and, and, and saying words of encouragement to him while we're praying. I mean, each one of us took a little moment to pray, but I knew the Lord was on, the Spirit of God was on Larry for a specific moment for him, for my, for my wife's nephew. And so I finally said, Larry, why don't you pray for him? And Larry spoke some words to him, and breakthrough came. He began to weep. He's standing there, nothing happening, nothing. When Larry said a few words and, and began to pray for him, he began to break. The, the real person began to hear what was being said. The drug wasn't no longer the filter anymore. There was something else. The real person was hearing and responding to the presence of God. I said, Larry, lay your hands on him. I knew God was all over him. So we, he prayed for him, and he chose to stay with us again that night because we called the place. They don't usually let you back in if you walk out. You got 30 day wait. My wife talked to him, and they said, you know what? He's a pretty good kid. He didn't give us any trouble. I'll talk to him. They got him back in there. He went. Now, now he is like a week or so better than ever. My wife got to go to a meeting with her, him yesterday, and he had wrote her a letter saying how much she meant to him and how her never giving up on him has got him to this place. When he left that first day, he stole our bike. We didn't even know where he was. Pastor Michael went looking for him because he was coming over to pray for him, and he left before we could get him. And we're searching the neighborhood. We can't find him. He won't answer his phone. My wife went into the sunroom. We have him shut the door. You can't hear too much. But I could hear her praying in the spirit, just travailing for that nephew of hers because she loves him. Her why was important enough to press through. It's over. He's taking the bike. You, don't know, you know he's hooked up with some drug dealer already. She wouldn't give up. I hear her in there praying, praying hard, praying with some enthusiasm. She come out, text come on the phone. He's here. He's at this place right here. That's when we went over and did our intervention. My wife has continued to pray, pray, pray. She could have give up. Look, he's left two times. Actually, three if you count the run away from our home. He's wrote so many things. I want to live for God. I want to live for my little boy. It's amazing. He's never done this. I just want to encourage you. Press on. Don't quit. I got to tie this up with one last thing. Let's put that picture up on the screen. Max Decker. What a man of God. Tuesday we had his celebration of a life well lived for God. Pastor Michael did the service and they had this candle over there in these chairs for his spot that he always sat in. Right where you're sitting, huh, Levon? Right where you sitting, right where your daddy always sat, huh? And the key to Max's life, was he got like 90 grandchildren? Great, if, you, if you count the grandchildren, the great ones and the great, great ones, yeah, the steps, yeah. and the steps, he's got 90, 90 grandchildren. He got a big family. There was a big bunch of people here that day. We set the room up for 80. We've never done that before. Pastor Michael um, shared with everyone this notebook that Max always had, and it had every family name in it. And the prayer request that he'd been praying for, whether it was salvation or whatever it was. And he'd pray over that thing every day. Persevering. Persisting on. Not giving up. Even though they, he'd call, hey, you come to church with me? No. They know he was calling for it, but they'd answer and tell him no. We heard that because one of them got up and told about it. His son. So he prayed over these names every day. And when the prayer was answered, he crossed it off. Man, I'm telling you. He was operating in that thing we talked about, push. Pray until something happens. Hmm. 
Pastor Michael did an altar call at the end of that service. If you have one person, usually I give an altar call at every funeral I do, give somebody just an opportunity to right where they're at, accept Christ in their life. You may get somebody to say, hey, Pastor, I prayed that prayer as they go by, paying their last respects. We had, Pastor Michael said, Pastor, I want you to come up here. I want you to grab all these salvation packets. Oh, you, want, you got one under there somewhere? There's some over there, but anyways, they're right there. It doesn't matter. He said, bro, he gave me a stack of them. He said, Pastor, I want you to stand right here as they come by. I, I, he's giving them instructions. If you said that prayer, you can take one of these salvation packets. It's going to help you. I went through the stack he gave me. I found everything under the pews. I went through all of those. And I got a whole line yet to go. And I'm scrambling. I'm running around here. Yeah, come on. Let's give God praise. Perseverance. Pressing on like this widow woman. We never, I've never seen anything like it. Ain't that right, Mike? Mike had a word on two, a Monday prayer and said, there's something ma- major God's going to do in this funeral. He was doing because uh, LaVon and Larry was here. He said, God's going to do something major. I don't know what it is, but he's going to do something major. Pastor Mike and I estimate 15 to 20 people receive salvation packets at a funeral. We don't have that sometimes on Sunday morning. God is good. Oh, press on. Ne- never give up. Never give up. Oh, yeah. Be back. Amen. They will. <coughs> Max had one of his prayer requests, not only for salvation, but one of his grandsons had a girlfriend, and he needed to marry her. And he always walked up and said, are you guys going to get married yet? Something like that. Are you guys, when are you guys getting married, right? Get the, get the marriage license, right? Yeah. Never would do it. That Tuesday funeral... The young man got up. His grandson got up. So I want to say a few things about it. The last person to speak. I got to say something about my grandpa. And he told him some things about him. And he told him how he always wanted him to, to get the license and get married. But we never did it. So I'm going to do it. And I'm standing up with the packet already. And he walks back. His girl, girlfriend's there. He gets down on one knee in a funeral. Gets down on one knee and opens the ring. Opens up the thing for the ring. Pastor Michael said, you did do it in your grandfather's presence. He was right here. Of course, he is one of those great cloud of witnesses. God answers prayer. I want to encourage you, do not give up. I got, I got a ton more stories, but we are out of time today. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you some more again in the future. Who knows what I'll say in the second service, but it's, you never know with me. What do you, what's your why today? What are you looking to God for? Pastor Allen, why don't you go ahead and come up, buddy? I love you, Pastor Allen. I appreciate your heart to serve. What's your why today? What have you been believing God for? What's fool in your heart that you really would like to see something change? And you know God can do it, but you don't know how, you don't know when. Maybe like Daniel, you just got to keep praying those 21 days. Don't quit. Because the answer is already coming when you pray. But there can be some hindrances. You got to let them know, I'm not quitting. I will never give up. I would never give up. You got to come to that place. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Heavenly Father, we love you today. Thank you so much for all you do for us. You do so many great things. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your steadfast love. Never quits on us. 
It never quits. And Lord, I'm praying today with these hearts that are out here that are looking to you that you're telling them today, press on. Keep pursuing. Be persistent. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever that need is, you will, just like the story of the widow, you will give your Holy Spirit to help them to press on and persevere till the answer comes. Just like Max did, Lord. Just like Daniel did, Lord. Help us, Lord, to persevere. Because your word is true. You said you'd help us. You said you'd be with us. You said you would live in us through the power of the precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, thank you for being our paraclete. Thank you for coming alongside and living in us and giving us everything we need. Wisdom, and power, and strength for every situation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I love you need you. We need you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Now, look to God for whatever you're looking to him for this day. Some of you here may not know Christ. I want to encourage you about one thing. I looked for that word perseverance in the King James, and I couldn't find it anywhere. I'm like, oh man, I really wanted that to be in there. I was just, of course, I was just looking in the persever uh, in the King James Version. So I looked up, what word is closest to that? Well, it's called steadfast. Can I tell you what steadfast means? It means the same as perseverance. But here's what it really means. And I may just give it to you off the top of my head, because it may be faster. But steadfast means never-ending. His word says that to a thousand generations, his steadfast love, his never-ending love, his enduring love continues. So I don't know if anyone here today needs to know that, that you don't know Christ as your Savior. But I wanted to tell you, God loves you. He'll never stop loving you. He's loved me through a lot of stuff. For a lot of years and he keeps on loving me and keeps on working with me to be everything I can be for him and to be more like him every day can we bow our heads all over the building real quick I want to do a, a second prayer for anyone that don't know Christ today if that's you today if you're saying you know I, I need the love of God in my life I need Jesus to come into my heart be my Lord and Savior. That's you today. While every head's bowed and every eye closed, why don't you just go ahead and slip your hand up on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. That's you today. Just slip that hand up. Just for a second, you can set it right back down. Thank you, Lord. We believe every heart is clear and every, every life is looking to you in this place here today know you as Jesus Savior and Lord thank you Father bless your people Lord I pray in Jesus name I'm going to stand up here for the next few moments even as they dismiss if you need special prayer I'd love to pray with you about that need I'd love to pray for you I'll be up here standing up here at the front and um, I'd love to agree with you in prayer and encourage your heart love you God bless you I'll see you next week Pastor Michael will be here. Let's, let's admit, let him know he's, we're, gl we're glad he's our pastor, all right, when we see him next week. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.